Hey YouTube, welcome to my channel. If you're new here and you want more math content, then please consider subscribing. If you learned something, then hit that like button. I hope you enjoy my video. Hey guys, welcome to part one of my series on quadratics for your A-level maths. In lesson one, we're gonna cover completing the square. So getting right into it. In maths, we use completing the square for a number of useful reasons. When we solve, we rearrange for the unknown x. But with quadratics, what makes them more difficult is that we cannot rearrange for the unknown because we have x in multiple places. So far, we've been using factorizing to rearrange for x. But what about when we can't factorize? What completing the square does is it rewrites quadratics with the unknown in one place. This allows us to solve any quadratic without needing to factorize. Another use for completing the square, which is what is relevant for A-level maths, is it allows us to sketch quadratics, and we'll cover this in the next video. Now let's just see how it works. So the first skill, which we should be very used to, is expanding brackets. So if I took x plus 3 squared, that's like rewriting the bracket twice. Then we have x times x, x squared. Then we have 3x, another 3x, which gives us 6x. And then we've got 9. If we have x plus 3 squared plus 1, then we have the exact same as the above, but then we have the plus 1 at the end, which makes it x squared plus 6x plus 10. Then if we have the minus 5, we have the exact same thing, which is going to be key in the future. So we are always going to have the exact same thing with a minus 5 at the end. So we're left with x squared plus 6x plus 4. Now with x plus 5 squared, we're going to have a similar situation. So writing this out twice. The main thing is we want to see a pattern here. So we're going to have x squared. Then we've got 5x plus another 5x, which is 10x. And then 25. And then we've got that minus 2 at the end, which together makes x squared plus 10x plus 23. Then finally, if we were to expand x plus a squared, now we're doing this so that we can see the pattern. So we have x plus a, x plus a. So expanding, we have x squared plus x a, or ax is a better way, because remember a is the number here that, we're, that we are referring to. So x a plus another ax makes two ax, and then plus a squared. Now, why are we doing this here? What do you notice about the coefficient of the x term in each case? So if you look at the coefficient of the x term here, we have 2a, which is always double the number inside the bracket. So what we're going to do with completing the square is that in this last line, if I rearrange slightly, so if I rearrange for just x squared plus 2ax, I can move the a squared to the other side. So this, I'm trying to change color here. I can move this a squared to the other side and I'm left with x squared plus 2ax. Then when I move the a squared over, I get x plus a squared minus a squared. So this is the key thing with completing the square. To complete the square, all you do is when you are introduced to a quadratic, you introduce a bracket and you half the coefficient of x and then you write squared. Then you always subtract the number in the bracket squared. Yeah. Then you might ask, okay, what happens if you have a number at the end? If I just have a number at the end plus b, then you just add b to both sides. So that number at the end just carries over to the other side. So it's a really easy skill. We just need to practice a few questions. So x squared plus 14x plus 10. So remember, we half the coefficient of x. So we introduce a bracket, x, and then half of plus 14 is 7 squared. Then we subtract this number squared, so 7 squared. And then the plus 10 just carries over. We can simplify it now. So we have x plus 7 squared, then we have subtract 7 squared is subtract 49, then plus 10, and then we are left with x plus 7 squared minus 49 plus 10 is minus 39. For part b, 
Now this one's interesting because nine is not divisible by two, but it's not a big deal. You know, keep things in fraction form. Yeah, so we can half the middle term, x, then subtract half this term. It just means write as nine over two squared. Then we subtract. Now here we don't have to keep writing this squared on top. Like seven squared, we know that's 49. So we could have written minus 49. Here, when we subtract this number squared, when we do a fractions, we square the top and the bottom. So squaring nine, we have 81. And squaring two, we have four. And then we have that plus 20. Now we just want to combine. Now you can use your calculator for this, but 20 we can write as 20 over one. Then to combine the fractions, we need both denominators to be over four. So 20 over one, we can times top and bottom by four. So we'd have four down here and 80 on the top. And so our final answer is x minus nine over two squared. Then we read the numerators. So minus 81 plus 80 is minus one over four. Two slightly trickier examples where the middle term is not gonna necessarily be divisible by the coefficient of x squared. So for the first one, we need to factorize out a2. Now there is only an x squared and an x term. So taking out a2, remember when you take out two, you divide the rest of the terms by two. So the first term will just be x squared. Then five over two, I wouldn't recommend you write 2.5, just say five over two. It's gonna make your algebra and calculations a lot easier it means less room for error and less need for a calculator. So what we do now is we introduce the square bracket and add another bracket. So we're gonna have x plus, now we half the middle term. Now think about it like this. If you take a fraction and you double it or times it by two, you double the numerator. If you half the fraction, then you double the denominator. So it becomes five over four then squared, then we subtract this number squared. So remember when we square a fraction, we square the top and we square the bottom. Okay, now we just clean it up. So we multiply in the two. So we're gonna have two lots of x plus five over four squared minus, then two times 25 over 16, the 16 would cancel the two to make eight on the denominator so 25 over eight. Then finally, part B, taking out a three, we would have x squared minus, then we have to divide the middle term by three, it would be five thirds, x. Then the plus one is just a plus one, we don't need to do anything with that. Now completing the square, introduce a square bracket, x minus this time. Now we're dividing this middle term by two. Remember, dividing by two, doubles the denominator, so five over six squared, then we subtract this term squared, which will be 25 over 36. Don't forget to close that bracket, then that plus one continues. Multiplying the three, so we have three lots of x minus five over six squared minus, then the 36 cancels the three to make 12, so we have minus 25 over 12 plus one. Now I'm anticipating that we're gonna to have to write the same denominator. So one is the same as one over one, but then we want the denominator to be 12. So we times top and bottom by 12. So we have this. So we have three X minus five over six squared. Then we have minus 25 plus 12, which makes minus 13 over 12. And so this is how we complete the square on more difficult terms. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you learned something. Stay tuned for my next episode. Where I'm going to show you where completing the square is used for sketching quadratics. Peace.